earth for the first time 2000 years ago that generation got to witness something in this magnitude that we are privileged to witness so the reason you're feeling what you're feeling your body is changing your mind is changing your brain is changing what you used to do won't work the messages that you used to listen the songs that you used to sing and hear and the people that you used to hang out you outgrew them it won't be relevant anymore you will feel like what in the world is going on but you're at the right place at the right time even if you feel like that you're at the right place at the right time god has put you there this transformation this metamorphosis has to take place and what do you need to do take care of your health <laughs> your physical health your emotional health your spiritual health healing of your emotions don't store up depression oppression anger any kind of emotional negative things that have been stored oh my lord you know the holy spirit you know something about water i am jumping out of my message today 70% of this earth is water so is your body 70% of your body is made of water and one thing about water is we don't know when god created the water millions and millions of years ago as we see in genesis 1 2 the earth was covered with water this water has some special qualities that i didn't know water records things witnesses as the bible says there are three things that bear witness and one of this thing is water that is mentioned in first john three things that bear witness how can water witness listen to me water has the capacity to record it has a memory of everything you speak your body is 70% water every word that you're speaking that water is recording it has a memory bible said it three things that bear witness the blood the water and the word and i didn't know how can water bear witness i thought it was baptism water the water that you were born came out of your mother's womb no 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 water is an essential part of our life when your body loses 12% of water you die is an essential for life that's why we keep drinking i don't know 5 liters every day that's what they say you're supposed to drink 5 liters of water every day why because water is life so your body every word that you speak to yourself your body records it and reactions happens in your body in a molecular level based on what you speak so it's very important you take care of your health because that is your greatest wealth as you're working so hard to make money it is good but the greatest wealth you have is your health and without which we cannot fulfill god's assignment for our life so we are going through this intense battle of emotion because of the change that is happening in the spirit and in the natural and everybody is going through it the enemy wants to make you feel like you are the only one who is going through this and everybody is just walking on cloud nine and no every single person is going through it can i hear an amen from somebody amen because because of the change that is happening on this earth god 
he is going to tilt this earth upside down to restore it, to align it back to the tree of life. Every religious system, political system, economic system, everything will be undone. Unraveling, complete unraveling. Like I said, the only thing that I can think of something like this happened is when Jesus came the first time. So we are embarking, we are at the dawn of a new era. That is the title of the newsletter that's going to be going out next month. First, the dawn of a new era. Everything is changing. And it is God is doing it. And sometimes God uses the enemy. Even Satan is a, what somebody said, Satan is a unwilling servant of God. <laughs> you know, Satan cannot do whatever he wants to. Satan can only do what God permits. Without God's permission, he cannot move his little pinky. So don't blame the devil. Don't glorify the enemy. Stay with God. When you don't feel anything, when you don't know nothing, just be there with him. You are with him. So then we are in the season of practical application of whatever we have been hearing. That's what Martin asked. Why are we here? Two years, three years went through this training. What did we do? Kingdom is not a message to be preached. Kingdom is something we have to do. We have to live to manifest. We don't come every Sunday to hear a message. And I, and I said that many times. And we are in the season of practical application of it. If we as a group can manifest this thing, then the rest is history. And until that happens, God is waiting for us. God is waiting for us. So there's a new course that is coming. October 16th, we are launching a new course, live course that I will be teaching the next move of God. What is God doing now on the earth and how can we be part of it? What is next in God's calendar? Third world war, that could happen. A rapture? Mm -mm. Revival? Mm -mm. <laughs> Great tribulation? No. The kingdom age. We are embarking in the kingdom age. And God gave us seven years to prepare. Why are we here? Martin asked this morning. He gave us seven years to prepare. Two years almost gone. We have four and a half years left. And unless you apply this and practice, then I don't know how to do this any other way. So let's pray. So I'm going to give you the practical lesson today, how to accomplish any goal that you have in your life. I After this message today, I want everyone to pick a goal. Whatever that goal is, a project, a goal, an assignment, big or small, doesn't matter. Have a pen and a paper ready. At the end, you will be writing this. And then we are going to apply the steps that you're hearing, going to hear today, uh, to accomplish that goal and come back and share with the group. This is what I did for the next three months or how long it's going to take. I don't know, it depends on the size of your goal and what you have to do to accomplish that goal. But whenever you accomplish that goal, we want to hear from you. You're going to come and share with the group. To accomplish that goal, you're willing to start any group that you want. You have absolute freedom. Connect with some people from Ecclesia or outside. Get together just like we did in the school days, getting together with other students to study math and history and discussion and all that thing. Remember those days? Let's do that. Instead of staying isolated, 
connect with somebody that you haven't connected yet from this family, Ecclesia right here. Send them a message on WhatsApp. Ask them how they're doing. What's happening? Can we work together to accomplish this goal? What, what are you working on? And you share with yours. They let them share with yours and work together. Make connection because relationship is important. Amen. Ready? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us together as a family from across the globe. Thank you for all that you are doing in our life. Father, we sense, we feel that resistance. We sense that, that battle that is out there, Father, emotionally, spiritually, physically, Father. I bless your people, Father. I thank you for the season of practical application. Thank you for the kingdom deliverance workshops that has been prepared. Four of them are ready. Three more to go, Father. A lot of work, a lot of preparation, a lot of investment. I thank you for every provision. I thank you for the tools. Thank you for relationships. Thank you for connections that your people need to accomplish their assignment, this goal that you put in their spirit, man. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for showing the goal that they need to accomplish the next three months before the end of this year, 2024. What did we accomplish? What did we do? I thank you for clarity. I thank you for sowing the seed in the right heart this morning or this afternoon, evening. I bless you people their families, their marriages, relationship, their health, their jobs, their businesses, everything they possess, I bless it. And the enemy will not touch it in Jesus' name. I thank you for clarity today. I thank you for speaking to us. Spirit of truth, Lord Jesus, you said you will build your ecclesia and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Build in us, through us, Holy Spirit. You are the master builder. We yield, we submit, we surrender to your voice, to your kingdom, to your authority, to your government. Father, we love you, we honor you. In Jesus Christ's holy name, we pray. And everybody said, Amen, Amen. Those who join late, you're welcome. Thank you for coming. Welcome to the Ecclesia if you're here for the first time. Let me just... Kingdom keys to accomplishing any goals. But before I get there, I need to share a little bit of the background, how God started everything. Because one day I was so worried. I was so down in my life, depressed, oppressed. And you know what God came and told me? He said, Abraham, all the problems that you have in your life, is because you don't understand one verse from the Bible. And I was so curious. I was so excited. If one verse from the Bible can solve all my problems, then I want to know what that verse is. Don't you want to know? You know, if God comes and tells you, all the problems you have in your life is because you don't understand one verse. And I was so curious. Holy Spirit, I don't want to miss it because that is the master key. And when he said that verse, I was shocked because this is a verse that I have been reciting since I was a child. <laughs> One of the first verses of the Bible that I memorized, which is Genesis chapter one, verse one, which said in the beginning, God created heavens and the earth. I said, what, how can this verse solve all my problems. And then he began to explain, and I think I shared this before in this meetings, but some of you knew. So he said, God introduced himself as the creator. He created everything, not as a prophet, not as a healer, not as a savior. God introduced himself as the creator. And he said, those who have products have influence. And there are two groups of people on the earth, producers and consumers. Unfortunately, my church became the largest consuming agency on the earth 
they don't produce anything, they consume. Then he said, heaven is spiritual, it is invisible. Earth is visible, it is natural. Both spiritual and natural are governed by laws that he established. Those who discover and apply those laws, they prosper. What? <laughs> everything in the natural, everything in the spiritual are governed by laws that God has established. And we thought it was the Ten Commandments. People fight still today about Ten Commandments. God doesn't love you based on your Ten Commandments or Twenty Commandments. The moment God's love become conditional, it, be, it is not love anymore. God never tells you why he loves you. Because if he tells you why he loves you, then it's not love anymore. Why God loves us? Because he is love. That's it. But our mind plays games. Oh, you broke that commandment. Oh, you broke that law. Now God doesn't love you. That is the religious spirit. And it is very difficult to be free from the religious spirit. Now I'm going to take you further from Genesis 1 verse 1. We know this verse. Then he said, there are only four kinds of businesses on the earth. Four kinds of businesses. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Every four businesses included in these two verses. In the beginning, what? God set time in motion. When he spoke that in the beginning, God set time in motion. You, your time is valuable. You get paid for how you use your time. That is one business. Most people are paid hourly in the United States. Some are by salary. But how you use your time. We have limited amount of time that God has given it to us to accomplish his assignment on the earth. Then he created number two business products. Every products that you buy. Right now you're sitting here watching this meeting. You might have 25 products on your body. If you're a lady, if you're a woman, you may have 55. Because of the jewelries and the makeups and the lipsticks and all the frills and decorations that you need to make yourself pretty. They are all products somebody made. God is the most creative person in the universe. And that same God lives in you and I. But the religious spirit came in and limited that creativity. And lied to us saying, you don't belong on this earth. You are not supposed to make any impact here. You are created to go to heaven and sing hallelujah. That is a lie from the pit of hell in Jesus' name. God didn't create humans to go to heaven and sing hallelujah. God created humans to manifest heaven on earth. That is our assignment. He created, what did he create? Heaven and earth. What is that? Space. Most of your money is paid for the space that you use. One day I was standing in this storage unit in Orlando where I stored all my office stuff, 10 by 12. And that's when this revelation came. I am paying for this 10 by 12. 200 and some dollars every month. That little bitty space that I'm using. Holy Spirit said, that is a business. The space that you use, whether your house, 
whether your storage space, your office space, wherever you use space, you will be charged for it. Even the little seat that you sit in an airplane, you are charged for that space that you occupy. That is a business. The land that you buy, or you own, or you borrow, or you lend. You're renting an apartment. You're paying for that space. God created space. God created time. God created every raw materials that's out there. And we have been running around like orphans who doesn't belong, who doesn't have a father. That's what happened because we partook from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So what are the four businesses? First one is time. A barber is paid $50 for an hour of work he does. A doctor is paid $400. Both have same amount of time. But what do you know? The skills that you possess. A butcher might be paid $20. But a chef is paid maybe $200 an hour. Your time and the skills that you possess. The second businesses that's out there, every business is products. The third one is space. Fourth one is service. The Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. What is that? He's serving the earth, offering a service, whether it is health, whether it is food, whether it is singing, whether it is whatever services that we use and receive from people, we pay for it. And God established that in Genesis 1. One and two. Can you believe that? And we have been coding. I have been coding this word since Sunday school. But I never understood because Bible is the most misunderstood book in the whole planet. We take the letter of the word, but we don't understand the message the Holy Spirit has in coded into those verses and we have to decode it. Decoding those messages. The letter kills. My God. We have so much of argument about the letter of the word. One person quotes this verse, the other person quotes 20 other verses to oppose it, to make sure that he is right. That is religious stupidity. We have been arguing about who is right, about which verse of the Bible. The letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. My Lord, my God, the fire of the Holy Spirit is coming here. Somebody said the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. Never argue, never, never argue with a person on the basis of doctrine. Never try to argue with a religious person quoting Bible verses. It will hurt to you. That's the only benefit you will get. You will feel hurt and you will feel wounded. You will feel upset. You will feel angry. But you give it to a hungry person the truth of God's word and they will like, give me more. I want more. That is the sign of the spirit of God ministering to another spirit. So what I am sharing with you, it is going into your spirit. And I, can, I can't, this Holy Spirit is bringing me back about this water thing, because when I watched it, it changed my perception. What happens to water crystals when you speak positive and negative words? It amazed me. 
be careful what you speak to yourself. You think nobody heard you, but your body, your mind, and your spirit, your consciousness, listen to what you said. Your self-talk, that's what we are going to deal with today. Hold on, put your seatbelt on. We are going to take off. This is only an introduction. I'm going to give you the kingdom keys to accomplishing any goals. Every space, if you're staying in a hotel, like I am today, I'm using this little space I'm paying. I have to pay for the space that I'm using. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Who created that space? God created it. But who is maximizing it? The ungodly, the unbelievers. And the Bible says we were created in the image and likeness of God. What does that mean? Does God has two legs and two hands? And ha we read about God's hands, his eyes, but he's not a person like us. He's spirit. Hmm. Holy Spirit, help me. What does it mean that we are created in the image and likeness of God? We are supposed to think like God. That's where the Bible says we have the mind of Christ. What does the mind of Christ think? God says he knows the thoughts that he think toward you. Thoughts of peace not against you, not to destroy you, not to punish you. That is the religious spirit perception created in our heart about our Heavenly Father. God doesn't get any joy in punishing somebody, killing somebody, or giving sickness to anybody. The thoughts that God things toward you and I is for our peace and to give us an expected end. Function like God. How does God functions? That's why he showed us in Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 through 25. God shows us how to function in his image and likenesses. Whenever God sees something hopeless, something dark, something void, he brings something out of beautiful from that situation. Doesn't matter what happens to a person, a kingdom citizen, if you encounter that person, you should be able to bring something beautiful out of that person. Religious people condemns and judge. Kingdom people brings life. Because we are sharing the tree of life, which is Jesus Christ. He represents the tree of life. Religious people condemns people for their mistakes, whatever happens to them. But if you're walking in the image and likeness of God, you look at the most hopeless situation and you will be able to bring out something positive, something good out of that person, out of that situation. May the Holy Spirit revolutionize your mind right now with that word. Whatever situation you're dealing with, may the Holy Spirit help you find something positive. In Jesus' name, whatever challenges you're going through, whatever trials you're encountering, may you see it from the eyes of Abba. He looked at the earth, void, dark, out of shape, no life, no light. God said, no, I can do something with it. Whatever, whenever you feel hopeless, Whenever you feel down, whenever you feel like you're at the end of yourself, oh, that's the word for somebody. 
whenever you feel, if you feel like you're at the end of yourself, bring it to the Father and say, Father, here it is. I am done. Please, can you do that? Father, here it is. I am done. I can't do this anymore. That's what, what does it mean that we are created in the image and likeness of God. And the third one is speak like God. Think like God, function like God, and speak as God speaks. And he said, let there be light. Can we be the agents of God's kingdom? Even we think that people who denied Christ, like Jesus went, because why did Jesus love Peter? There's no condition. If there's no, if there is a condition, then it's no love anymore. That's why Jesus went looking after Peter, asking him, do you love me? Because I can't stop loving you. Just in case you stop loving me because of your mistake, you are overwhelmed by guilt and your regrets and the pain of your action. But that doesn't cause me to stop loving you, Peter. Ooh. If we can apply this, if we can practice this, we can cause a kingdom revolution on this planet Earth. But we still have those religious glasses that we inherited, that religious guilt and condemnation and regrets that eats us up like cancer does. And the enemy is taking advantage and he is stealing what belongs to us, our best. The enemy is stealing our best. And he shouldn't. If we start to function in the image and likeness of God, think like God. Every thought that comes to your mind, filter it identify it and see from which source that thought is coming. From which transmitter? God's kingdom transmission or the demonic world? This thought is coming into my mind. Many people think, they think, they think, but they don't. There's a lot of mental activities going on. Thinking is an action. Please write that down. Or somebody write in the message there. Thinking is a verb, is an action. Our mind is always busy. But thinking is when you take the moment and stop and intentionally think what you want to think. That is thinking. <laughs> That's a lot of thinking that I just said. Intentionally taking a moment. Sometime before this kind of meetings, I can't tell you the battle, the enemy, the heaven and the hell comes. And I am sucked into this dark hole. I don't know where is God. I don't know where Abraham is. <laughs> I'm telling you. But I just have to be. I just have to be. That's where God said, be holy as I am holy. Not try to be holy. Or try to be righteous. Be. Walk before me, Abraham. Oh, by the way, the Father wants to tell you, he loves you so much, people of God. You've been struggling in your mind. You've been struggling and striving. He just says, just let it go. Just let it go. He says he loves you so much. Each one of you, each one of you here is precious to him. And sometimes you wonder, where is God? Does he even care about what I'm going through? 
Does he even know what I'm feeling? Yes, he knows. So how do we accomplish any kingdom goals? What do you sow when you are born again? That is the first beginning, first start of kingdom living. What you sow? But that's not enough. God shows you the end product. Then he starts the process in you to become the person. I am in the process of becoming a new version of myself. That's why I'm here in Ecuador. <laughs> A new version. You are in the process of becoming a new version. What do I mean by that? Imagine Jesus called the disciples. They were fishermen, right? They were fishing all their life. Their parents were fishermen. Their grandparents were fishermen. And Jesus comes and calls them, follow me. I will make you a fisher of men. Or like David, he was a shepherd. Now the anointing oil has been poured upon his head to be a king. But there is a world of difference between how a shepherd thinks and how a, a king thinks. Oh, listen to me, people. Some of you are still thinking based on your religious upbringing. There's a world of difference between how a shepherd thinks and how a king thinks. There's a transformation that needs to happen. A metamorphosis that you need to go through in your life to become that person who can carry and fulfill the vision. That is the battle that you're going through. What do you saw? The vision is clear. It is real. It is from God. But now God is taking you through the process of becoming that person. And that person requires certain new skills. That person requires certain personality adjustments. That person needs to know and learn some new things, and you are just waiting. That's what God's people do. They just wait until Jesus comes back. Just waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. Like Martin asks, why are we here? Why are we doing this ecclesia meeting for now? What is the purpose? What are we waiting for? Imagine disciples when Jesus called them, I'm going to make you a fisher of men. I want you to think the difference between catching fish and catching men or people, fisher of people and fishing fish. <laughs> Imagine Peter, James, and John. These are the three smart dudes in the disciples, you know, Peter being the most outspoken. And they said, hey, Jesus told us we are going to be fishers of men. So let's push this boat out into the main road, the paved road, and bring the net and try to catch some men. Will that work? Would they have worked if they used the same boat and the same net? They've been catching fish now to catch men. It wouldn't work. They need to learn all new skill set to become fishers of men. The principle is same, but the skills that you need to learn is different in God's kingdom. That's what God is waiting for you. So David was a shepherd. The anointing oil fell on him. Until yesterday, he thought like a shepherd. Where is the grass? Where is the next pasture that he could take the sheep to? Now he needs to learn to think like a king. What is economy? What is real estate? What is 
human resource management in the palace, all these people that I need to be responsible for. How do I do that? And some of you are waiting, Abraham, John, to go and learn everything and come and tell you, no, that's not how it's going to work. I am not going to learn about healthcare. That is not my assignment. I am not going to learn everything about economy. That's not my assignment. My assignment is clear to lay the foundation of kingdom. To understand your purpose and your calling and your gifts, then you go and learn based on what you saw when you're born again. And then bring the testimony. Then you bring the product as a worship to God, as you heard me speak, speak a few weeks ago about the dominion teaching. Hope you're listening to it again. Go and learn what is the skill that you need. What is the knowledge that you need to acquire for you to step into this new season that God has for you? It takes more than Shantai Rantai who stole my Honda stuff to accomplish your kingdom assignment. It takes more than that. You, what, what would have happened if God has taken the people of Israel straight from Egypt to the promised land? One day, boom, supernatural transition. He took them from Egypt, dropped them in the promised land. What would have happened to them? Somebody write in the chat box, please. What would have happened to those people, 600,000 men, God picked them up from Egypt, dropped them in the next hour in the promised land. What would have happened to them? They wouldn't even have survived for a day. They would have been eaten by those giants. <laughs> There's no they could have. They, they would. You put a slave into a promised land with the same mindset in a place of abundance, they will live exactly the way they lived. And they will complain. But God took them to the wilderness. Why? To change their mindset from slave to sonship, from consuming into productivity, being occupied, to function as a nation, kingdom, nation. They had to go through that metamorphosis in their mind and majority of them did not make it. Why are we here? Martin's questions. It came at the right time, Martin. Why are we here every Sunday morning as an ecclesia? What is that skill set that you need? What are the skill set that you need? What is the new thing that you need to acquire to fulfill your kingdom assignment other than waiting for God to do something? Like I always say, God is waiting for you. God paints your future in your imagination and there has to be a process involved to transition that imagination into reality. And it takes your spirit, your mind, and your body. How does this work practically? I'm going to share with you right now kingdom keys to accomplishing any goals. And I want you to have a pen and paper. Not now. When I say to write your goal that you want to accomplish, that you're believing God for the next three months or how long it's going to take. We are going to do it practically today, practical application, because we are in the season. When you're born again, God paints your future in the canvas of your imagination. Oh, I want to say that again. When you're born again, when you are born again, God paints, P-A-I-N-T-S, 
the future, your destiny on the canvas of the imagination of your spirit man. He puts a picture there. That's what happens to the people in Israel. God said, I am going to take you to a land that flows with milk and honey. What was he doing? He was painting a future, their destiny in the canvas of their imagination. He called Abraham and said, get out of your country, your father's house. I'm going to take you to a land. What was God doing? God was painting the future, the picture of his destiny, his assignment in the canvas of his imagination. That's how God works. Because we are created in the image and likeness of God. Imagination comes from the word image. God thinks. He has a plan. I know the plans I have. God has a plan. God has a purpose. God has a counsel. Like, men, like I said before, God encodes his kingdom message throughout the Bible. But we got stuck in the letter and we start fighting with each other. That's where all these denominations and groups came about. We missed the message. We took the letter and made it a weapon to hurt another brother or a sister. And what do we need to do? One God, once God paints, oh, this is, this is, people of God, I want you to catch this, please. Once God paints the future of your destiny in the canvas of your spirit, man, what you need to do is, you need to meditate on it. Meditate means, what is meditation means? That's an abused word in this day and age. The new age people are master in this. Just like the Lord's Prayer we gave to some other group, meditation, God told it, Joshua 1 verse 8, Psalms 1, meditate. Meditation means no repeating. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what some people do. At least where I came from. They will come and say, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord 200 times. That is religious spirit. God is not impressed with your repetition. Why he told you to meditate? Because he wants to to you to take what he showed you and program your spirit man, your subconscious and your conscience mind. That is the purpose of meditation. Because your inner person is still in conflict with what God has shown you because your conscious mind, your spirit man has not believed it yet. That's why come, people come to church, they get excited. They shout and they're happy. But there nothing has gone into their spirit man, into their conscious mind. As soon as they leave that door, they go back to the same old thing. So we need to meditate. You take what God has shown you. Meditate on it. How do you meditate? That involves speaking. <laughs> that involves speaking. Not the same praise the Lord and hallelujah. You speak what God has shown it to you. Not the Lord is my shepherd, the Lord is my shepherd 2,000 times, nothing happens. But you meditate on the rhema word of God, the word that God has spoken to you personally, you meditate it until it become part of your spirit man. Then you use your mind to visualize it. You see it as if you're already there, that it has happened. That's what Jesus said, whatever you believe when you pray, if you believe, you speak, you believe what you have, you have what you speak, you will have what you spoke. In Mark chapter 11, 23 and 24, he 
he said that whatever you spoke you will have it that is guarantee from god and then with the body that's not enough you meditate you make it part of your conscious mind your subconscious mind which is your spirit you mind you visualize it and the third step is you take action what kind of action i'm going to show that to you in a minute this is the kingdom keys to accomplishing any goals that's why god speaks your vision your destiny before it happens because he needs your cooperation believers used to say god is in control no god is not in control he is sovereign he needs your partnership you can check out of this by for you, yourself and tell god i don't want to do this and that's up to you <laughs> god will say okay that's fine god needs our partnership god is not in the controlling business we are in control he gave the earth entrusted to us and told us you decide what needs to happen and what shouldn't happen on the earth this is the process of becoming the new version of you the kingdom version your language need to change the slangs and the clichés that all those things that you used to now you need to learn to talk like a king not like a street boy hello <laughs> is everybody okay there you were a shepherd yesterday but now you've been promoted as a king or a queen like esther was how does this queen speaks she cannot talk like an orphan anymore she was an orphan until yesterday brought up by her uncle but now she's a queen she need to change her vocabulary she better otherwise she will sabotage her assignment can you imagine david coming into the palace as a king and talking like a shepherd <laughs> making those noises like he used to make noise while he was with the sheep he cannot he had to learn this new protocol of kingship how does a king operate oh i feel the glory of god this year thank you father kingdom keys to accomplishing any goals the bible says genesis chapter 1 god created everything in 6 days why did god take 6 days he could have just created everything in one day he is god why did he take this thing and do it in 6 days what is the purpose answer me people of god why did god take 6 that 6 days could be 6000 years we don't know it could be 6000 years but he took 6 days he didn't create everything in one day which he could have remember we are created in the image and likeness of god genesis chapter 1 verse 1 to 25 he is showing us how to function those verses are manifestation of god's image and likeness he is showing us how to function like he functions how to think how to do something like he does why did he take 6 days to create everything when he is god he could have just spoke into existence everything at once one word could have been enough but why did he drag this thing for 
days, you know, <laughs> and he's God. It is to show us his kingdom secret, to show us the kingdom keys to accomplishing any goals. That is the purpose. Why he took six days? Because he wants to show his children how to follow his footsteps how to imitate him as their children, how to follow daddy, do it like daddy does. God is showing us kingdom kids to accomplish any goals. What is that? This is how he did it. This is why he did it. He divided his task into six days. Mm -hmm. He had a goal. He knew exactly what he was doing. He knew the goal that he wanted. I want you to pick a goal that you want right now. What are you trying to accomplish in the next three months before the end of this year? Or the next year, 12 months, Whatever time that you need, you take, but pick one thing right now. Ask the Holy Spirit. I'm going to pause here and give you three minutes to pick a goal. God said, God exactly knew what he wanted. He wanted to create the earth. He wanted to create all these plants and trees and water. And water was already there, the sun, the moon. And he knew exactly what he was doing. He knew exactly what he was going to do each day. And he was preparing this earth, making it habitable for his sons and daughters. That's what he was doing. That was his end goal. We were not, earth was not created for us, as the religious spirit told us. We were created for the earth to manage the earth, to take care of the earth and look what we did with it. To establish his kingdom and his will on the earth. So just like God did, he, sell, he had a goal. He had something in his mind. He had the finished product and the Holy Spirit wants you to pick a goal right now and write it down on your paper right now. Let's do it. So if you've done it, say Amen. Unmute and say Amen. Each one when you finish, unmute and say Amen. 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 I heard Amen. Amen. <laughs> Pick a goal. It has to be something achievable. Please don't put, I want to go to the moon in 10 days. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I want to be like Elon Musk. No, don't put those kind of goals. It has to be in alignment with your kingdom assignment. Don't put, I want to be the richest man in the whole world. Mm -mm. <laughs> Somebody is laughing there. Pamela? <laughs> <laughs> Lord have mercy, right? Pick and select a goal. I had to scratch my goal. <laughs> you had to scratch what? <laughs> I had to scratch my goal of going to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> See, I knew you would. Somebody would write that. <laughs> uh, Mando, you're funny, man. 
And the next step is write it down, which you already did. Set a deadline. See, God created everything in how many days? Six days. He had a deadline. So select a deadline. When do you want this goal to be accomplished? You, had, you don't have to do it in six days. You put a, a deadline, six months, three months, one year, whatever. You need a deadline. God had a deadline. God didn't just say, okay, I'm going to do some stuff and let's see how it goes. And then as it comes, you know, I may need more days. <laughs> uh -uh. Set a deadline by this day and time. I want to complete this goal. That has to be specific. It has to be written down. Three months, four months, five months, six months. And just select one goal. So don't select five of them. You know, I'm working on transitioning these books into printed books. Working on the workshop, even though I'm not writing it, most of it. But I had to go through it. A lot of things going on. But I am in the process of becoming this new version for the next season of my life. And I want you to be the same process, becoming the new version of your kingdom version of you, king version, queen version of you. And you have to go through that metamorphosis. You cannot think like how you used to think. You have to learn how to guard things, speak like God speaks, function like God functions. And that's what he showed us in Genesis chapter 1 and 2. And I'm teaching and writing from Genesis chapter 1 and 2 for now for 25 years. I haven't finished it yet. Because that is the blueprint for life. The rest of the Bible is an interpretation of what is written in Genesis chapter 1 and 2. And every word in those two chapters is an encyclopedia, like water. If you study about water, you can write an encyclopedia about water and its functions. We haven't even scratched the surface of it. Study about air. Study about bird, different kinds of birds. Study about the earth and soil and different gases and metals that Genesis 1 and 2. We haven't even scratched the surface yet, people. And we call it creation story. That's what the religious spirit told us. Those two chapters are encyclopedia. Every <laughs> laws, the spirit and the natural governs in those two chapters, God only gives a glimpse. And the rest is up to us to go and search it out. God won't give you everything. God will give you a glimpse and he hides the rest. Because it is the glory of King God to hide a matter. But it's the glory of kings to search it out. You go and study about that bird and take dominion. That is dominion. Stars. God just say one word about stars. How many stars are there? Why there is 12 zodiac signs? What is their influence on every month and weeks and days of our life? You need to go and study them. God only give glimpse. He won't give you everything. Now we have to apply the image and likeness of God to discover the rest of the things. What if we were taught this in Sunday school? Some of us will be better than Elon Musk today. And we thought that we are trying to make God happy singing three songs. 
what if you have discovered the secrets of his kingdom? Set a deadline. Next one. Make a list of everything you need to do to accomplish that goal. Every tree, every plant, every sun, every moon, every star that needs to come into place. You don't need to do that now, but you can take your time. But I'm just giving the outline today. You need to do this practically in your private time. I'm giving you the steps, kingdom keys to accomplishing any goals. God knew what are the plants he's creating, how many animals are going to be on the earth, what kinds of creatures, creeping things, snakes, ants, tortoise. As I'm watching here at the lake, there's birds <laughs> swimming in that lake and flying across the tree of life. I'm looking at the tree of life and teaching this. Can you imagine? Next week, don't miss it. I'm going to show you the tree of life. What a privilege looking at the tree of life and teaching on God's kingdom. That has to be so special, people of God. Make a list of everything. Write this down, please. That's what I'm doing. It's slow. Make a list of everything. Everything means every little things that you need to do, that you need every step. God had apples and oranges and grapes and lavender and lemon and <laughs> everything in his mind. And he knew which soil is needed, which country, which part of the earth it needs to go, which fish needs to be in which part of the ocean. Do you know there is biological boundaries that God has established even in water? Every land, every nation has a boundary. Even ocean has boundaries, biological boundaries. The fish that you eat in India, it's not here in the ocean in the United States. It will not be there in South Africa. There's a biological boundary that God has established for each ecosystem, for every creature that needs to exist on the earth. God made all those details. The sun doesn't rise every day the same way. It changes. It goes in its axis through different seasons to the left and to the right and to the left and to the right. How did he do that? That is details. To have different seasons. What if there is only summer time? My gosh. What if there is only winter time throughout the year? No. Four seasons are needed. Next up, prioritize the list. God didn't create man first. Then he created, you know, other things. No, that's what we try to do. We think money is the problem because poverty spirit taught us money is the problem. And we get stuck with that. No, money is not the problem. Because God never starts anything with money first. You might have heard me say that before. God never starts anything with money first. In the beginning was the word. He starts with word sound and water. That's how he starts. Prioritize the list and then take action. You need to do something about it. Otherwise, it's not going to happen. Once you pick a goal, set a deadline, write it down, Make a list of everything you need to do. Prioritize it and begin to tackle it one by one. Take action. This is doing. You meditated it. You visualized it. It became part of your spirit, man. 
because what do you see now with your natural eyes and the spiritual eyes is the same thing. There's no conflict inside you. Your self-talk and your natural talk is same, has come into alignment. Your inner voice and what you speak is the same thing. There shouldn't be any conflict. As long as there is conflict, progress is delayed. Everything I'm doing today, where I was sleeping on a concrete floor for 18 years of my life, 63 countries, this is the 63rd country I'm sitting and teaching this. How this happened? Speaking. Not because of my degrees, not because I have something from some university somewhere, just following the kingdom principles of my heavenly father, my daddy. That's how it happens. And that's all you need. Take action. And the next key, the final key, do something every day toward accomplishing that goal like God did every day. And he did it and he completed it and said, evening and morning is the first day. And he looked at what he did and said, it is good. Never postpone for tomorrow what you're supposed to do today. Never procrastinate. That is one of the qualities God's grace has granted me. Even if I have to do something tomorrow, I will just do it today. I'm saying, I don't have to worry about this tomorrow, so I'm going to do it today. And which gives me relief. Do something every day. It has to be your priority. Not watching your favorite sports team. You can take a break. That's okay. But priority is kingdom. Kingdom first. Everybody say kingdom first. I hope kingdom first for everybody here. That's why you are here. Kingdom first. Kingdom first. See? Kingdom first. The kingdom Kingdom first. Kingdom first. Kingdom first. Kingdom first. Like my brother Sharpet says, you put the money where your mouth is. Do something every day toward accomplishing that God like God did. He did something every day and he looked at it and said, good job. This is good. This is really good. And six days he completed it. And seventh day he rested. And that is the kingdom keys to accomplishing any goals that you have. So the next three months, what are we going to do? You are going to focus on this accomplishing this goal. Then you are going to bring back testimony your each one of you is going to come and share in the ecclesia family this is what i did this is what i'm bringing to the family this is what i'm bringing myself to accomplishing this goal of kingdom nation on the earth if you haven't seen anything if you haven't seen when you're born again you pick what interests you what are you passionate about what do you like to do? You pick something. You start somewhere. And God will honor that. Don't try to do 20 different things. Don't try to focus on many things. One thing, like Paul says, one thing I do. This one thing I do and bring your skills and the blessings that brings to you to the family and say, this is what I offer. Like God's people came to Moses and said, this is what I'm bringing as an offering to build the tabernacle. This is what I'm bringing to build the temple. This is my offering. We need a kingdom healthcare people. We need a kingdom media. We need a kingdom economy to be established. 
and I'm sitting here in e Ecuador, <laughs> I'm trying to learn this place name. How much can we accomplish here? An apartment only costs $250 a month rent. An hourly salary is, you know, $400 or $800. I'm like, I want to buy a 10,000 acres of land here to establish the kingdom nation. But where is the money? <laughs> Who is going to give? Who is going to donate? There has to come from your productivity. That is your offering to build God's kingdom on the earth. We have to think beyond ourselves. Because we are still stuck in ourselves so much. We haven't surrendered our ownership to God. Because he is the owner. He is the Lord. Amen. Please lift your hands and say, Father, thank you for teaching me today the kingdom keys to accomplishing any goals. Thank you, Holy Spirit, thank you, for showing me Showing you. Your goal. Draw that picture. Paint that picture of my future in my spirit, man. Let me see it clearly and distinctly without any shadow of doubt. Heavenly Father, I thank you for drawing that picture. Your people's heart and their spirit about your kingdom and the kingdom nation. Whatever they are called to do, Father. Let it come into manifestation. Let those keys be transferred to them right now. The keys of your kingdom in Jesus Christ's holy name. I bless your people with these keys, Father, that you have given me. I have shared it without holding back anything. Whatever you gave me, Father, I gave to them. And I thank you for making us productive a group of people that we can show to the world this kingdom is real and it works. And others can come, see and come. Others can see and come. They are waiting to see it. They are waiting to see this. And it depends on you and me, people of God. He's waiting. Let's get serious about this. And ask yourself that question that Martin asked. Why are we here? What are we accomplishing? Challenges are there. Trials are there. That's part of life. We thank you, Father, for what you did today. We give you all the glory, praise, and honor. In Jesus Christ's holy name we pray. Everybody said, Amen and Amen. I have one prayer request. I want you to pray. Amen. I wanted to pray where God wants us to Amen. establish a base for his kingdom, a location. I want all of you to seriously pray the location that he wants us to establish a base with a training center where people can come and get trained, stay and trained equipped for God's kingdom as part of the could be part of kingdom university but we need a headquarters we need a base somewhere on the earth it could be Ecuador Guatemala United States Philippines I don't know wherever God says I will go Ireland it doesn't matter <laughs> Italy doesn't matter we will go there, but I want you to pray with me, please. Tanzania. Will you please? Earnestly, fervently, as you're focusing on these goals that you picked, and we'll be hearing from different people, different weeks. Next week's Armando, then the following week, 
um, Ernie and Priscilla is going to share with us. And we will be taking communion as a family on October 6th. Ernie is going to lead that. Then Priscilla is going to share about her grace that God has given us about brain function and neuroscience, how all that work, that's going to bless us. So every week we are going to hear, whenever God gives me something, I will step in, I will stare the water, and then you jump in and get healed. <laughs> um, <laughs> any questions, comments, feedback from what you heard today? Please. Talk to us. Oh, wow, a lot of comments there in the chat box. I don't have the time to read all of it. Botswana, yes. If that is Botswana, I will go there. Namibia, I will go there. Doesn't matter. Mount Everest, I'm there. <laughs> yes, I see Katie. Please go ahead, Katie. Hi. This was really good. Um, this was really uh, something that I didn't realize I've been working on in my spirit, but I didn't really know what it was. So my goal for me, um, it will be easy because God will give me the strength to do it. I will be persistent. And I'm not only going to transform the way I speak and know that I'm a queen of the kingdom, but I am going to transform my body. It's something that's been holding me back. You know, my mind, body, and spirit, but it's all connected, and I know the importance of the body. So um, right around Christmas, hopefully by the 22nd, I can get on and be a little thinner and moving better and doing all the things God wants me to do for his kingdom. And I believe because this is the only thing that has been holding me back is um, not doing it. And I always, when I wrote goals before, I always accomplish the goals, working for the county, working for probation, and I haven't done goals in a long time, so thank you so much for this. I appreciate it. And the chicken's a rooster, and he's doing really good, and I get to let him with the flock next week. Yay! <laughs> That's why I like to look like him today. I'm just kidding. Those are the kind of things I have to stop saying. I'm going to start right now. <laughs> Chase those chickens, Katie. That will... <laughs> Yes, please take care of your health. That is important. The health tribe is going to come alive. Tell me, I, she is somewhere here. She's anointed and she's praying about it. We have other people volunteered. I left a message yesterday and it's going to kick off and come alive. So all the tribes need to come alive in a resurrection or all the tribes have been dormant. Because people are just waiting. So now you've got the keys, kingdom keys to accomplishing any goals. And this works in the natural, in the spirit, in the business world. And they use the same keys, which was written in Genesis 1. We didn't know it. The corporate world uses this more than we do. Uh, Jefferson, please. Good evening, everyone. Uh, it's nice being here with you guys, and thank you very much for these practical ways of um, accomplishing our goals. And thank God for today's meeting because it has given me a sense of intentionality in carrying out my tasks. So thank you very much for this guide. So please, I have two questions, and um, I think the first one is, um, is it possible that we have parallel goals, like, uh, for example, um, writing a book, and also doing another project. And still, my time can be still managed doing these two goals. So is it advisable to go along with these two goals? Yes. And, okay. Okay. Then secondly, um, in such, like, um, kind of person whereby, I think that's my weakness. Whenever I plant something and I try to do it and I don't accomplish, maybe I put all efforts and time and everything at the end of the day, the plan doesn't come to the way I want it to be. So how can we be able to overcome this depression or um, 
disappointment whenever you made the goal for a day and you try to accomplish it and it doesn't come the way you expect it to be. So um, do we re-strategize? I'm that is another way. Okay. That is called lesson learned. <laughs> you okay. learn the lesson <laughs> and then you redirect the GPS to the next one. Don't stay there. Don't stay there okay. stuck because something you tried didn't work. Now I'm like, okay, throw the towel and I give up and I run. No, you keep going. You pick the next one because every experience okay. is important in life. No experience. God never wastes an experience. And everything is important and we learn something and we understand something, then we mature. So we don't look at success and failure in God's kingdom. That's not how he looks at things. God never looked okay. at somebody and said, you failed. No. There's another chance. There's another opportunity. Okay. You gain from what you learned, from the past, from what you learned, and then you use it for your advantage in the next one. All right, that's wonderful. Then, totally, please. Um, so, uh, can we work out goals based on what is available? Since we know that um, we shouldn't depend on the availability of money, so can we be able to use what is available to work with our plans so that we won't be restricted to what is not available? Is that advice again? I didn't get what you just said. Okay, can you get? Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, I said. Um, what about in situations whereby we work with what is available? Since we are not moved by having money first, we are moved by faith. So, is it um, okay for us to use the available to achieve our goals instead of waiting for the unavailable? Yes, of course. As what I believe, what I have seen in my own life, when this process is ready, God will bring the resources. Like I remember when I wrote the first book, I'm like, where's the money is going to come from to publish this book? <laughs> <laughs> now, after, I don't know, books and republishing them, maybe did it a hundred times now, over a hundred times, redoing it still doing it, continue to do it. Now then you become a master of it. But the first one is always hard. Doesn't matter whatever it is, what you try to do, the first one is always the most difficult. Then the more you used to it, that you become good at it, and it become like a second habit to you. You just know it's going to happen. God is going to do it because he has done it many times. Because he is faithful. Okay. Alice. So lastly, please. Um, oh, there's more. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, just the last one. Thank you. Um, is it possible that um, your kingdom assignment can relate to different tribes? And... Uh, it relates to economy, it relates to business, it relates to family, it relates to, in fact, 12 tribes. Is it possible that your assignment can relate to that? No, because everything is connected. There is an interaction because I am connected to the economy because, but that's not my calling. That's not my assignment. I need food or health care. I need to take care of my health, but that's not my calling. I need to receive the benefit from it. But my assignment is something different. My assignment is to lay the foundation of God's kingdom, root out the religious system and the bondage of Egypt and Babylon, reestablish God's kingdom foundation. That's my assignment in people's lives, on the earth, wherever it is. But that takes money, that takes health, that takes writing skills, that takes uh, editing, but I don't do all those things. I need the benefit of other people's gift that I have to pay for sometime or most of the time. 
but I don't need to be part of all those tribes, health tribe and and this tribe and that tribe, and because because it takes finances to accomplish what I'm called to do, I don't need to be. I can be, but I cannot focus on all 12 tribes. It's impossible. But it's all connected because we're all connected to one another, our calling, because we are family, God's kingdom. I think that's how it works. Alice. Thank you very much. Oh, Bill, I saw your hand. I'm coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Abraham. Thank you so much for today's teaching. I was blown, really, um, because uh, listening carefully when we began, first also, I'd love to say hi to Kingdom Family. I love you guys. Every one of you is so special. Your contribution, your post that uh, building, encouraging, you are just the best in the world. I appreciate the leading of the Lord that I could be found in this family. I heard my brother Shepard Dick asking a question, which I also asked almost the same question I asked the Lord. And I said, with the teachings that Abraham is teaching us as we came back to the Ecclesia again, Lord, what do I need to be doing? What am I going to accomplish? There are many questions that were going within a few days. So when he asked that question, I said, Lord, you really confirm things. But I went for a training yesterday. That training had to do with uh, learning how to grow, graft, bud, and sell for trees. Uh, I do farming. I've learned a lot of quite a number of things. And um, with the passion God has given me on to be able to raise this ecclesia and the vision that has been was given to me almost 30 years ago for me to begin to implement it from last year. You know, I would, uh, I agree and concur with what you have just said, uh, Apostle Abraham, to do with, I am called to this and uh, I'm not, really, this is not my main call, but my main call is this shepherding. And I remember and saying, Lord, the blueprint you gave me and all, and the message not so that, well, who will tell me? The Lord told me one thing, you will not run after men of God. You will not run to every conference and think you will not do that. That's over 30 years ago when I just surrendered my life to the Lord. I will bring as you serve in my kingdom. I was in a religious church. That did not even call church, ecclesia, kingdom, nothing. I heard those words. And he says he will be able, as I obey him, then God will be able to bring those servants of God because my boundary lines will fall in pleasant places. And that's exactly when the last thing of it before I could be able to launch the, you know, I heard, you know, beats and this in apostolic forums and things. It was not the full template. And then one day, it's now almost over two years, uh, two years ago. And I was in a meeting online. And then the guest speaker was Dr. Abraham John. I wept. I cried. I said, what manner of love do you have to give me now the whole full package for the message? Because you told me you called me to shepherd. It not even use the word pastor. It says, you shall shepherd my people according to a pattern. I said, Lord, I had beats of all this and the whole thing has just been given in a so that I, I don't even need to struggle. 
And that's how the question was. Now that Ecclesia, we are back, Lord, what is it ought you are giving me uh, hints of things to do with this work that you have called me? I conquer with you, Abraham, when you said, God does not give you, he conceals things, you know, as uh, Proverbs 25, verse 2. You know, it's in the it's what is a desire of the king to conceal a matter and a, what, a desire for the kings to be able to search it out. And when we are searching out, that has to do with Matthew 6, says, seeking in first the kingdom of God. And I found that's the first scripture when I surrendered my life to the Lord. And I've never moved from that. Religion tried to get me there and all. Oh, I thank God for his leading that I'm here. Today, what you have actually said, I then I realized, Lord, yesterday in school, uh, in class, this is at the Natural Resources Development College, which is even near where I'm studying. It's under the agriculture sector in the country. And the college is got different uh it's got different courses they give on animal production on citrus this that are doing on you know poultry on livestock or livestock poultry and uh, the aquaculture and i really felt the lord say go and do this you know when the engineer was teaching i was seeing scriptures of what i have learned when i saw the way they you are taught to do grafting on budding propagation it's all about the kingdom message and twice this engineer looked at me and says madam they didn't even know who i am what i do uh, why are you looking like that it's like you've got multitudes on your head he says i said to him at the end of the i will be able to let you know you will understand and i had to tell the man he was so encouraged that there were two pastors actually in that training so my project really already was to be able to do with this farming land that we have got. One of, what is one of the, because I want to see an orchard of trees that will be able to have a value chain, you know, in processing. But Lord, it starts from somewhere. You have to collect a lot of uh, seed, you know, propagate, you know, to be able to have nurseries, to raise up a nurseries in order in the three years that you know you start having fruit but you know you start with uh, what what you have what you have said um uh, uh, apostle abraham my neighbor has got a very big tree that is hello. not really being taken care of hello we are running out of time so please make it shorter okay so and uh just to conclude this tree and the lord says you want to have you want to go and get a lot of propagating in order to cut cuttings or seed. You only need to ask. This person doesn't know how to take care of this. Help them to take care of this tree. And by doing that, you are able to cut. You are going to have nurseries and dummies in order for you to have nurseries. So we can start. We can start wherever we are and we don't need really need finances. Thank you so much for the teaching. And you have what you need to start. That's how God's kingdom operate. Everyone, including myself, to start it. So thank you, Alice. Thank you for what you're doing in Zambia, the kingdom schools, training, everything. May the Lord bless and multiply you. And if you're here for the first time, and if you're not part of the Ecclesia WhatsApp group, if you leave your number with a country code on the chat box, Mama Pedro will collect it and add it to the, that's where all the communication happens, sharing what people are doing, what is happening, where it is happening, when it is happening, new courses, everything is there. So please, I see many new names here today that I haven't seen before. If you're here for the first time, and I will recommend you that you be added to the Ecclesia group on WhatsApp because we can stay connected and connected to the rest of the family, events and everything. New course is starting October 16th. Please don't forget to enroll. Please don't wait for the last minute. Go to the kingdomuniversity.org and choose the next Move of God course starting on October 16th. So we have two more comments. Uh, Dr. Kati, 
my friend, I haven't seen you in a long time. He's a scientist anointed by God. Please, what's in your heart, my brother? Thank you, Apostle. Good to see you. Okay. Uh, thank you for sharing the information today about the water, especially, which is mm. my favorite topic you are touched today. Is it? <laughs> That's why oh I just <laughs> jumped up to share something with you. <laughs> Actually, Please. you have said that water has a memory. Mm. It's true that it was published already in 1988. Mm. Jacques uh, Benvinsti, Benvin he has said that water has a memory. Even the scientists have proved it, water can store the information. And uh, how the, because we know that our body contains 70% of water and mm. our body molecules like protein, DNA and uh, carbohydrates, everything to function, it need a structured water, means mm. the water which has a proper structure. It has mm. a correct bond angle, it has a correct bond length, then mm. only it form a correct structure. Mm. If anything goes wrong, it, it, it means that they have proved that words have an effect on water. Mm. If you speak a good word, it forms a good structure. Mm -hmm. If you speak a bad word, it forms a negative structure, which, which impacts on our health, our mm -hmm. body and our cells. Especially they have tried on different, uh, uh, they took the water in different glasses and they spoke the word. Mm -hmm. a different words such as love, kind and even some demonic words also. And mm. they have cryopreserved it, means they have crystallized it and they mm. absorbed under microscope and they could see different structure according to the words. Mm. So the good words spoken, they have formed a very good structure and the mm. bad words spoken, they formed a very ugly structure, means they couldn't form any structure. So mm. they proved that they have some effect on our body. Mm -hmm. So that is a very interesting one. So even Jesus has said many things on word, power of word. When Jesus uh, cursed a tree, it has dried up from the root. That we can see the power of word. Even our God is a creator. And we see that word, words are not just a vibrations. They actually carry the power. And you said many times, uh, I, I remember very well, the only one thing which is uh, required to step into supernatural is a confession, means to say, to say the word. So that is a very powerful gift God has given to us to create what we want. So Amen. that's was, and even it affect it, uh, the words which we speak every day, it affects our brain, it affects our cell, and it also it affects our DNA. Mm -hmm. And I have read some article that every negative word we speak, it damages our DNA. And the damaged DNA will lead to a cancer, obviously, the scientists have proved it. So that's why we need to be very careful what we speak in order to create a good, whatever we want to create, what, whatever mm -hmm. we want to manifest on this. So mm -hmm. the only gift God has given is the word. So if we use the word properly, we can manifest what we want physically. So thank Amazing. you for, I also shared that PDF with you in WhatsApp. Please go through and evaluate it. If it is good, it can be useful for the Ecclesia. Thank yes, you. thank you. We need to hear from me more. But there are two secret words that has the most positive effect on us, the water, our molecular, every innermost being. There are two words they say that are most powerful. They are love yes. and gratefulness, thankfulness, yes. those two things. Yes. That is the most powerful words or emotions that has the most effect on our being, being grateful. And when I heard that, I said, no wonder the Bible says, be thankful and present your needs with thanksgiving. My goodness, God is so smart. And it's in the Bible. We didn't know it. <laughs> yes. You know. Thanks for being grateful. So every morning when you wake up, be grateful for 10 things. Lord, I'm thankful for the water. Thank you for this coffee. Thank you for my health. I'm breathing. You know, thank you. 
my goodness, it changes everything. That whole day, that set the face for pace for the the whole day. Well, thank you, Dr. Kati, for sharing that. We need to hear from you more. Maybe one of these days you can present your kingdom assignment that God has given you. Um, thank you. With it. Yes, now my brother, Dr. Bill Mantuka, all the way from Oregon. <laughs> I want to say space, but... <laughs> That's true. That's what it looked like, your background. <laughs> Behind me is the eye of God. He has us. We are the apple of his eye, and he is watching over us. So I just that's that's what this uh, picture behind me is talking about uh, from the NASA Space Telescope. Um, I just wanted to offer a word of encouragement as I listen to you present the keys implied with that, but I, I think it's never at the risk of overstating two verses that came up. The first one we've been we this is like in our our fiber of our being on every one of us seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything will be added to you and the the sense that I got as we were listening is that that whole seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness is about our relationship with the father and how we see him do what he is doing um and then the second verse that came in is John 5, 19, that when Jesus said the son of man, that he's giving us a model for ourselves in walking out the Genesis 1 and 2 mandate, that Jesus, the son of man, did nothing of his own initiative, but he only did what he sees the father doing, and he did it the same way. And so as I'm listening, many of the questions and many of the, they all center around the how. All right, this is great. This is good teaching, Abraham, but how do I do this at 2.30 in the afternoon on Tuesday? And the thing that I want to um, just encourage everyone with, and you said it about praying, about meditating, that we're not human doings, we're human beings. And so that whole thing, we, we tend to assume it goes without saying, but I think because of the way we're transitioning from the religious system to our kingdom uh, place is that we, we need to hear the voice of God and we need to meditate on what he says. And when we go into that place of hearing the voice of God, it's as if when the student is ready, the teacher appears that everything is added to you. So it isn't, while goals and all of that are great in their place, it doesn't supersede the need to every day cultivate a working relationship with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So that it's not that we go in and get our orders and then we go off and do them. It's that that implies separation. That still says we have religious residue from the traditional church system, that there's separation. I've got to go find out what God wants. As we meditate, as we hear the voice of God, we co-labor with him. We are in union with him. As he is, so are we in this world, First John. And so I just want to encourage everybody that what we do flows from who we are in him. And so if we focus on who he is, that says that's who we are. And now when you ask the father for anything, he will give it to you. He won't, if you ask for bread, he won't give you a stone. If you ask for fish, he won't give you a snake because you already know him. You already know his heart. So from that, he, your thumbprint is the unique thing Everything that is unique about you will come in that context of who you are in Christ. And from there, it just flows. You don't have to figure it out. One day you say, I'd like to do this, let it be, and it happens. And the next thing you know, you're talking to someone who can give you the very thing you've been seeking. So it's not like 
I got to go get this goal done. I got to go get this goal done. It's all about how do you flow with the father as he walks you through and you walk together. So we're moving from a boss employee relationship that religion has taught us to now we're sons in the kingdom co-laboring with our father. Daddy, am I doing it right? Daddy, is this what you want? And now when we ask for wisdom, it flows. And that's how you establish. And then you look back three months and it's, oh my gosh, look what we've done. And there's no pressure. There's no striving in your own strength. The word is to trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not to our understanding. And then he directs our steps. So I just, I really felt that impressed to, to encourage everybody today that in the context of what we've heard, it all comes from that seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. How do you characterize your relationship with the Lord right now today will determine how you quickly and how fast you move as you co-labor with him. Good. Thank you for that two cents of advice because these <laughs> people are the foundation, you know, the sonship. We cannot share everything in one teaching. Right. There's been a series of teaching for three years, two and a half years, the sonship, your relationship with the father, all that has been set in the world. Now we have a practical application of it. That's what we are sharing. Right. So we I've don't want to mix. over 40 years and have learned, even in several places I can go back and learn, where I have my ladder leaning against the wrong building. You know, you get to the top of the ladder and it's like, uh-oh. And the reason I got to that place was I had not sought the kingdom first and his righteousness. That I had gone off, I thought I knew what God wanted to do, and then I found out I needed correction. I needed to be brought back in because I had gone off in my own strength to do it. And so my, my encouragement comes from over 40 years of trial and error and feedback and, like you said, um, that failure is our feedback, and it's a good thing. We don't we don't work against it. We use it for the future. Oh, Amen. Thank you. Well, hope you received enough to apply to something for practical application, a goal in alignment with your kingdom assignment. This is not a goal that you need to go and find out tonight reading some books. This came, this has to come from your part of your kingdom assignment, walking with your father as your assignment. That's what we need to focus on. And this is that season of practical application. We have done the theory part for two and a half years. We have been learning the theory. We learned more than I think anybody could learn, <laughs> you know, in three and a half years now let's do this how do we do it so that you do that by hearing staying with him that relationship like you and i shared today even if you don't hear nothing you don't feel nothing you be a son and a daughter there you don't go by feeling you don't be walk by sight because you don't see something oh my gosh what is there god is there your father is there with you all the time we are one with him as bill just said so thank you everybody sorry for going over time today but it was good next week please don't miss it god willing i will turn the camera around show you the tree of life <laughs> god bless you have a wonderful fruitful anointed week in jesus name i bless you go Amen. and prosper and walk with him in Jesus' name. Thank you. Bye-bye. This teaching will be uh, on the university channel within 24 hours. It will be added there so you can watch it again if you like. Share it with your friends and do whatever you want to do with it. Uh, Teddy, were you going to say something? No, I was just saying bye. And then oh, you start again. So. We hear your voice. We haven't heard your voice in a while. You need to say um, something, you know. Well, I... Today, I just made a goal, and my, he's restoring my family, and that's been on my heart for a long time. And he showed me that, um, you know, everything's going to be new, 
and you need to renew your mind. So I'm waiting on him. And that's my goal to have a renewed mind uh, to go into this restored family. And it's already begun. So last week, uh, they had a big birthday party for me, my daughter, who hasn't talked to me for years. And we belated birthday, Teddy. Oh we, we had a wonderful time. And we've been studying the kingdom for quite some time on and off. And mm -hmm. the Lord said, you haven't have to have a new mindset. So that's my goal. And I give it 12 months because uh, I'm 81 years old. There's a lot to be renewed. <laughs> so, oh, by the way, gave me something while you were talking. First uh, action is to read your family book yes. again. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, okay, I'm going to do that right away. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Bye, bye, everyone. Have a wonderful week. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Good night. Bye. Bye.